Cola with DiscountJuicers.com to do another exciting episode for you. In this episode, I'm going to show you guys what you should never do when juicing fruit. My name is John Cola, and I got into juicing 27 years ago thanks to Jay Cordage, the juice man. I saw his infomercial on TV. I ordered his juice man to uh, juicer back then, and I started juicing. And I've never stopped for 27 years now. I've learned a lot along my juicing journey, and I'm considered the number one juicer expert in the entire world. Uh, click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss my new and upcoming episodes. I've come out every five to seven days because I'm always testing the latest and greatest juicers. I also can help you get the best juicer for your specific needs depending on what you are juicing. So be sure to check my videos for that as well. Now I'll be showing you guys some of my tips on juicing fruits that I want you guys to do if you guys are juicing for your health. If you're juicing for flavor or for taste, that's great. You could probably turn this video off now. My specific goal with juicing is to increase the level of my health. A lot of you guys out there want to lose weight. You maybe have some health opportunities that you want to you know, get rid of, that you want to learn from and get your body in a healthier state to be able to live more disease free and live a healthier, uh, longer life. And so that's what this video is gonna share with you guys, right? I have videos, links down below, why f drinking fruit juice is not as bad as you think, which I go over published scientific studies on how fruit juice is not just a sugar bomb. That being said, you know, I always like to teach good, better, best. Drinking a homemade fruit juice, 100%, you know, out of apples made in a Nama juicer like I'll be using today is way better than a soda or a Coke or, you know, some other kind of bottled beverage with added sugar. That being said, there are ways you could actually take your fruit juice up to the next level. And that's what I'm going to share with you guys in this episode. So I know a lot of you guys may be indoctrinated into juicing by Jay Cordish, the juice man. I mean, he sold millions of juicers and is literally my juicing idol. I looked up to him a lot when I was new and just learning and getting into juicing. One of the things he has said in the past and said is that you shouldn't mix your fruits and vegetables. And if you are going to mix fruits with vegetables, the only fruits you should mix with vegetables are things like pears, and I got some Asian pears, and apples with your fruits. You know, so the first thing I'm going to tell you guys is that, you know, while that's what I learned when I got started, that's not what I believe now. You know, I believe now that, you know, getting more vegetables in you is critical, and if you need to add a little bit of fruit to do that, that's the best thing. You know, I'm definitely only an advocate for ju juicing straight fruits or high percentage of fruit juice, when it's gonna get you to, you know, not drink something worse, obviously, like soda. That being said, I am here to let you guys know that I want you guys to juice your vegetables. Vegetables are more under-consumed on the planet, and especially in America, than fruit is. And, you know, fruits are just so delicious to eat on their own. And in many cases, actually, fruits may not juice too well. So, eat your fruits and juice your vegetables is what I'm gonna tell you guys. But for those of you guys that wanna juice fruits, these are my tips so you guys can do it healthier. Next, I want to share my topics on, you know, doctors out there, whether they're naturopathic doctors or otherwise, that tell you to go on a fruit juice diet to cleanse or detoxify. My personal thoughts on this, well, fruit juice, you know, is probably going to be better to detoxify you than eating a standard conventional American diet or standard American diet. My goal when doing a juice cleanse would not be to go on a solely fruit diet because there are properties and nutrients in vegetables that are quite important based on my research for detoxification and for cleansing, such as nutrients in leafy greens that are vital for phase two liver detoxification. So if I was going on a juice cleanse, what I would be doing is I would be juicing some fruits, absolutely, but I'd be juicing it with some vegetables. I'd also be drinking vegetable juices and more importantly, different kinds of vegetable juices, including green leafy vegetable juices, including root juices, including stem vegetable juices, right? My thoughts are that every different fruit or vegetable has different properties and they can help you help to detoxify you on different levels. And if you're strictly only juicing fruits, you know, that might be good on one level, but then I believe you're missing other levels of detoxification. 
So with that, let's go ahead and get into this video to share with you guys my opinions and my thoughts on how to juice fruits successfully for the best health outcome. So the first thing you want to do when juicing your fruits is use the right juicer. So important, using the incorrect juicer, you could basically end up throwing a lot of your um, you know, juice down the drain because it comes out in the pulp. The most used juicer that's sold today is a high speed centrifugal ejection juicer. They're loud and they are really not efficient at juicing fruits. In a recent video where I demonstrated the NAMA J2, link down below to that, against a Breville high speed juicer, and all high speed juicers work pretty much the same. You know, the NAMA made like 40% more juice based on my memory you know, when juicing the tangerines. And you know, so you're literally gonna lose a lot of nutrition in the pulp when you throw away that pulp using an inefficient juicer that not only is not efficient, but also aerates the juice more and lowers some of the phytonutrients or phytochemicals in the juices that you make that I believe are the component of the juice that can benefit you guys the most. So what is the right juicer for fruits? Is it the NAMA J2? Well, it depends on your specific needs. The best juicer for fruits in my book is not even a juicer, it's a vacuum blender and you guys want to do a technique called vacuum juicing. That overall is the best way to juice fruits if you want the highest yield and highest nutritional quality. Link down below for the video on that where I share with you guys how to vacuum juice your fruits. Second best juicer in terms of fruits is something like a hydraulic press style juicer such as a Norwalk juicer which is not a business or a pure juicer. Even like the old school like wine or apple presses where they make you know they press apples into apple juice or hard cider or they press grapes to make grape juice or then they ferment that into wine. So these are old school techniques used to literally extract the liquid out of the fruits. They actually are quite efficient so they actually get the highest yield much like the vacuum blender. The challenge with the press style machines in my personal opinion is that they you know, maybe provide more enzymatic activity which will then break down some of the phytonutrients in the juice in my personal opinion because there's higher enzymatic activity. Uh, more so, the other thing that they do is that they hold back a lot of the nutrients due to the press cloth in my opinion because they put out more of a water without as many phytonutrients and this is evidenced by me personally through taste testing when I taste, you know, juice from a NAMA when I juice pineapple versus a you know a Norwalk in it with a pineapple and the juice tastes more watery out of the Norwalk. The third juicer that I'd recommend for you guys for fruits is more importantly a vertical slow juicer. Not just a slow juicer, there's horizontal juicers out there that are slow juicers and these really could you know have problems with juicing fruits especially the softer textures of the fruits so I recommend a vertical single auger and of course my favorite vertical single auger for juicing fruits is the NAMA J2. Link down below for a video I made on juicing five different fruits in the NAMA J2 and how easy and how well it works. And that's what I'll be using today because the NAMA is the juicer that I use most in my home. My second tip for you guys when juicing fruits is I want you guys to select fruits that have higher levels of the soluble fiber contained within them. There's many different kinds of fiber and they're normally classified into two groups, soluble and insoluble fiber. The soluble fiber is the fiber that dissolves in the liquid. It's like the, the jelly, I want to say jelly fiber. You know, so when you're juicing, you're keeping the soluble fiber, but when you're juicing, you're removing the insoluble fiber because you're getting all the hard grit, all the fiber that's solid that does not dissolve in the juice when you're juicing. So that for that reason, I want you guys to include more of the high soluble fiber uh, fruits because that, mean, that means you're going to keep more of the soluble fiber in the juice and consequently you're going to drink that and get them into you. Soluble fiber is so important for many different reasons. Number one being soluble fiber can uh, slow down the absorption of sugar into our bloodstream. Um, that's number one. Reason number two, the soluble fiber can feed our microbiome because our microbiome and the little gut bacteria is in our gut like to eat the fiber that we literally cannot digest. So that's why the soluble fiber is so important. Some fruits have a lot and some fruits have a little and I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, John, 
What fruits have more soluble fiber? Well, I got a I got a chart for that, and I put a I have made a video with this chart. I'll put a link down below to that where I go into the soluble versus insoluble fiber. I'll just go over really quickly the fruits with the most soluble fiber. Number one fruit with soluble fiber are these guys, cactus fruits. These are actually not on my list, but based on the data I've seen, these contain 50 to maybe 75 percent soluble fiber. It makes a really thick, gelatinous kind of juice. Then moving down on my list, lemons, and I want you guys to juice the lemons with the rind, the peel and all, don't just peel them, I mean I, mean, I juice just whole lemons just like this. The lemons are 62.5% soluble fiber. Next is oranges, oranges are 58% soluble fiber, very important when juicing oranges, I want you guys to just take a, a carrot peeler and peel off the outer orange coloring of the orange but leave all the white pith. That's where the majority of the soluble fiber is in the orange. And most people just peel the orange and then throw away that white pith. That's the most valuable part to get more of the soluble fiber in you to get the benefits of the soluble fiber. Next, we got the pears. Uh, pears are 55% soluble fiber. I happen to have Asian pears today, but pears have really good fiber for you. Next, papayas. I love papayas. Papayas have... 48% soluble fiber, so actually they're quite fiber rich. Watermelon, another one, 42%. Mango, down at 40%. Grapes, another excellent one with soluble fiber, 37.5%. I'll be juicing grapes today. Strawberries have approximately 27%, as well as apples with the skin. The most important part of the apple to juice is the skin, actually, in my opinion. 27%, and if we get down to something like a pomegranate, which is rich in phytonutrients, doesn't contain a lot of soluble fiber, still contains about 20% soluble fiber, and the worst thing you guys could ever juice, in my opinion, for soluble fiber is the pineapple, and we know pineapples taste so good, and so many influencers juice a lot of pineapples, but know this, when you're juicing pineapples, you're basically giving up the overwhelming majority of the soluble fiber because you're only keeping 10%. So I would encourage you to make some different choices and juice things that will retain more of the soluble fiber because it's just in there from the get-go. My third tip for you guys is to juice fruits with more phytonutrients in there. Phytonutrients, in my opinion, are probably one of the most important properties of juice. And it's one of the reasons why we get benefits from drinking the juice is because of the high phytonutrient content of the juices. So phytonutrients are things such as anthocyanins, beta carotenes, beta lanes, lycopenes, all these crazy words you guys don't need to know. But how do you know if something has a lot of phytonutrients in there? Well, you want to look at it. If it has a nice deep rich color and the flesh is colored, not just the outside is colored, then it has lots of phytonutrients in there. So this is a pomegranate. Of course, besides pomegranates, good things to juice are things like uh, berries, things like cherries, cranberries, even things like crab apples have more phytonutrients than a traditional apple. If you guys want to learn more about the phytonutrient content of foods, you want to take a look at a book called Eating on the Wild Side, which really opened my eyes to how you could literally just make a few changes when you buy food at the grocery store and have, you know, a massive uh, more influx of phytonutrients in your diet. My fourth tip is I want you guys to focus on juicing fruits that have a lower sugar content if that is important to you. You know, you may not be able to do all these things, but try to do as many of them as you can because sometimes you're going to juice things that have a higher levels of sugar. Some of the fruits that have lower levels of sugar are things like lemons, berries, kiwis, grapefruits, watermelon, even things like honeydew melon. Um, have lower sugar content. This can be quite beneficial. My fifth tip for you guys is I want you guys to always juice the skin of your fruits if they are edible. A lot of the nutrients in your fruits and vegetables are on or near the skin and if you're peeling your apples, right, you're losing a lot of the nutrients because a lot of the nutrients are in the skin, especially the polyphenols in the red apples. So important. So I want you, and even things like pineapple, you could juice the skin of pineapple, it's technically edible, and if you juice it, you may get it into you, but otherwise people don't normally eat the skin, 
You could also eat, you could also juice the skin of things like cantaloupes, honeydews, and watermelons, right? If it's normally eaten, you can juice it. So kiwi fruits also, peaches and uh, plums, totally. You can put them in with the skin, take out the pit. I do not juice the skin of things like papaya and mango, which are normally not eaten. Um, and yeah, so apples and pears, uh, juice the skin. You could use the skin of pomegranates. They're actually, you could juice them. It's gonna make the juice taste really bitter, so I usually don't juice it. Um, you could juice the skin of lemons and limes, but on uh, oranges, grapefruits, and tangerines, you wanna just cut off the coloring, but you wanna keep that white pith in there. When juicing the skin, once again, lots of nutrients are contained within the skin that makes the fruit juice even healthier for you than juicing it without. My sixth tip for better juicing of fruits is to always select hard and firm fruits. You know, this is a nice green pineapple that I selected for juicing. It's nice and firm, right? If you selected a soft pineapple that you could stick your finger into that's getting soft, it's like a nice golden color, when the fruits get softer, they lose their texture, and most juicers cannot deal with softer texture items as well as harder texture items. So it's always good to get nice, firm fruits for juicing. And if you guys get some soft fruits, do yourselves a favor. Don't put it through your juicer. Do yourselves a favor and just eat them or blend them up into a smoothie. My seventh tip for you guys is when juicing, I want you guys to juice with a coarse screen. Today I'll be juicing in the Nama J2 juicer. And the Nama J2 juicer comes with a coarse screen that has larger hole sizes. This will allow the fruit juice to come out more easily and maybe even keep some of the insoluble fiber as well, making the fruit juice healthier for you guys to drink. I wanna show you guys how to change out your juicing screen. Super simple, super easy. We're gonna go ahead and take the unit off the motor base. We're gonna open this up. And we're gonna go ahead and remove the juicing apparatus. We got the spinning blade here. And then here we have the fine hole screen. So I wanna show you guys the difference. You guys see the difference. This is for juicing vegetables with the smaller holes. This is for juicing fruits with the larger holes. Uh, only better juicers will include the coarse uh, screen on there. So now we're gonna put the auger in there. We're gonna put the wiping blade back on. And now we're just gonna go ahead and drop this into the juicer and assemble the hopper back in place and drop it in place and we're all easily changed out to juice with the coarse holes on the screen that will allow more of the insoluble fiber and generally get a better yield on the fruits because it's not as restricted through all these small fine holes. My eighth tip is another tip for you guys having to do with screening your produce so in many cases I use a sieve right on top of my collection bowl to basically um, run the juice through a sieve to remove some of the extra fiber, the inside of a fiber that does make it through the juicer and go into the juice. When you guys are juicing fruit-based recipes, I encourage you guys to ditch the sieve and not use it because we want to keep as much of the sible and inside of a fiber in our juice as possible for better health, in my opinion. My ninth tip is I want you guys to spice it up. So when juicing fruits, you wanna add a little bit of spice, not too much. We have a hot pepper here, and we have some ginger here. You could also do something like turmeric that you could add to juices in small quantities to really spice up your juice to add lots more of these phytochemicals and give your juices some zing. I mean, adding just one cayenne pepper to a juice could really balance out the sweetness with like some spice, you know, or making like a ginger, which actually is one of the most anti-inflammatory uh, vegetables you guys can be juicing. Once again, if you're juicing ginger, don't juice a lot. A little bit goes a long way. Even just a half inch piece or an inch piece is definitely plenty. And of course, let's not forget to talk about turmeric. Turmeric could also make your juices change color very quickly because it's uh, nice and orange, but also highly anti-inflammatory and there's so many different benefits to their curcumin and curcuminoids in the turmeric. All right, we're down to the 10th and final tip and the most important tip, so I wanna honor you guys that made it this far because a lot of people probably bailed on this video and they didn't even watch it this far, but this is the most important tip, honestly. When you guys juice your fruits, I want you guys not to make 100% fruit juice. I want you guys to mix your fruits with vegetables. I personally recommend 
and what I do in my home in general, not all the time, is I like to do a 50-50 mix of fruits with vegetables, right? Doing this will now get more vegetables in you. It's easy to juice a fruit and drink a straight fruit juice. It's oh so sweet, oh so delicious. But the problem is most Americans do not eat enough vegetables, including probably your kids as well. So this is an excellent way to sneak in some vegetables when you juice their fruits. I recommend a 50-50 ratio. For many of you guys, that may be too much. So, you know, if you can't do 50-50, then do, you know, 75% fruit, 25% vegetables. This will kind of move you in the direction of kind of getting off your sweet tooth if you have one, because you need these super sweet drinks, you know, and slowly increase the vegetables and reduce the fruit content. These days when I am making a fruit-based juice, you know, I will always juice pretty much 50%, maybe even sometimes a little bit more vegetables in with it. It's it's on a rare day that I juice 100% fruit, although there are days that I do that sometimes. But overall, I would encourage you guys to get more vegetables in your fruit juices. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, John, that could wreck the taste of my fruit juice. Not if you do it right, right? So that's what I'm going to share with you guys right now. So. My favorite vegetable to juice with fruits is cut up right here in this pitcher right there, and it is jicama. So you basically cut off the skin of the jicama, you peel it and cube it up, and it is all ready to juice for you guys. The reason why I like the jicama so much is because it has a nice neutral flavor. It doesn't taste strong like a beet or like a carrot. It doesn't really taste like much aside from kind of like a little bit of flavored water. It kind of tastes like jicama, maybe even a tad bit sweet. The other reason why I like jicama specifically when I juice my fruits is because if we go back to my chart here, my chart, if we look at jicama, jicama is 51% soluble fiber. So say you do 50% jicama and you do the other 50% of pineapple. You know, instead of just having 100% straight pineapple juice and only getting 10% soluble fiber, you're now at approximately 60% soluble fiber because you got the 50% soluble fiber from the jicama and you still got the 10% from the pineapple. So now you've literally upped your soluble fiber game. And let's not mention that jicama has prebiotics in there, such as inulin, also may have higher levels of nitrate to have better you know, uh, blood circulation. I made a video on that as well. And it's just an amazing vegetable that I believe more people need to juice. And the reason why I like it is because it, really, it doesn't really add a lot of flavor to when you're juicing your fruit. So especially if you have kids, it's really going to be hard to detect that you put the jicama in there for them in many cases. Plus, it gives a nice, it just gives a nice flavor. Like, I love the taste of jicama. Other things you guys can use that are going to really be mellow on your fruits when juicing are something like cucumbers. I actually happen to have an Armenian cucumber here. And I like that this is like more light green than dark green because that won't affect the color as much either. Um, and cucumbers are nice neutral flavor. Some celery could also be fairly neutral as well to juice. So that way you could literally minimize the amount of sweet fruits you are juicing. And another vegetable I like to juice with my fruits, and we're using the standard traditional um, you know, definition of vegetables, like if it's in the vegetable section or considered vegetables by the US government, then I consider it a vegetable, though technically some of these, such as the cucumbers and the peppers are technically fruits because they do contain seeds. But I like to consider these vegetables because they are simply non-sweet fruits. And if you do some uh, bell peppers, such as these, in with your fruits, you know, once again, it adds a very neutral flavor. Bell peppers are highest in vitamin C, so actually a really good recipe would be like traditional oranges that you peel off the outer coloring, leaving all the white pith on, 50% oranges, and 50% orange bell pepper. You're going to have a vitamin C shot out of this world. The juice is still going to be orange. It's going to be amazing, and now you've upped your level of soluble fiber as well as nutrition from some vegetables besides just drinking the OJ. I think if every American drank orange pepper, orange juice that they made themselves instead of getting the stuff that's packaged at the store, you know, the world would be in a much better place myself, in my opinion, all right? So yeah, I want you guys to include 50% of your vegetables in with your fruit juices. I mean, you could do other things. You could use carrots if you wanted, but then you're going to have an orange colored juice, you know, and whatever you're juicing. 
celery, I mentioned that before. You know, I want you guys to pick some neutral vegetables, but hey, if you're more hardcore, man, just go for some broccoli and apples. Like, to me, <laughs> that's not going to taste the best. But hey, I'm happy you guys are getting more broccoli in you because the goal of juicing, in my opinion, is specifically there to get more vegetables in you. And if you got to add even a higher quantity of fruits to do that, so be it. But I want you guys to work on the goal in the long run to reduce the fruit juice consumption and increase the vegetable juice consumption and doing this 50-50 mix can be the perfect thing that can help get you there. So now I want to show you guys what I am juicing today and today I'll be juicing actually the black grapes. So these are some of the best fruits you could juice because they're black, they got the anthocyanins in there. Um, so they're very nutritious, they also tend to be very uh, sweet and I'm juicing that with a pitcher of jicama. So 50-50 pretty much we got a pitcher of the grapes and we got a pitcher of jicama and then also to boost this juice up, I'm spicing it up, I got a little a bit of ginger in there as well. So this combination, once again, 50-50 mix, spicing it up, adding lots of jicama, it's going to be nice and neutral. I'm still going to retain the nice, uh, you know, purple, black color of the grapes. And today I'll be using my favorite juicer for juicing fruits. It is the Nama J2 juicer. And if you guys want to get a special discount on the Nama J2, you can visit them at namawell.com and use the coupon code half fruit h a l f f r u i t half fruit and that'll save you guys $55 off the Nama J2 juicer and not only will it save you guys money but when you guys use that code half fruit Nama will share with me a small commission so that I can continue to make my educational videos so that my information and the knowledge that I share as well as all my juicer demonstrations are possible so I want to thank you guys who do use my code in advance who will use it I want to thank you guys who have used my code in the past that is how I'm able to power my lights buy my vegetables and make these videos where I share my valuable information you guys aren't going to hear anywhere else because I've been doing this now for 27 years and I've been focused on a health minded you know juicing mindset because I want to rebuild my health because I almost lost my life when I was younger Links down below also to see why the Nama J2 is my favorite juicer and it's good for more than just juicing fruits. I make vegetable juices in it. I do bulk juicing where I will juice, you know, eight quarts of green juice at one time. I have a video where I show eight quarts of green juice under one hour. I also juice like, I don't know, 10 quarts of root juice, took a little bit over an hour. Link down below to that video so you guys can see how this juice is basically straight up roots as well. Some of the hardest things to juice so yeah from fruits to roots to greens to stems <laughs> like celery the Nama J2 does it all alright so now I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to juice in the Nama J2 I got the I got the you know container here of grapes and jicama and ginger I always like to put in the ginger first so we're just going to drop some of that in there like a handful or two of this stuff then we're going to take a handful of grapes and I like to alternate load uh, the grapes with the jicama and the reason for this very important is because when you have a slow juicer and you juice the fruits with the root vegetables specifically it basically helps you get the fruits drier so the pulp will be even drier if you're juicing these mixed up like this than if just juicing grapes alone you know if you're just juicing grapes alone or cucumbers alone then the pulp will be a bit more wet but when you put something dry in there with all this fiber like the roots, the juice will be ex expressed and pressed out more effectively in the Nama J2. So I'm just going to uh, put in handfuls of each of these at a time to get a nice even mix. Now that I got the J2 all loaded up, this is the amazing thing about the J2. You can just literally just shut the lid, lock it in place, and turn this machine on. And now the machine is doing all the work for you. You know, you could walk away from this machine, literally come back in about four minutes, three to four five minutes depending on what you're juicing and you're gonna have a whole pitcher full of juice anywhere from 24 to 32 ounces based on my testing when you load up the hopper depending on what you're juicing so this truly saves you time not in the sense that the juicer takes less time to juice but saving you time because now your hands are free you could you know deal with your kid that's crying in the background or check your phone or you know do something else in life that you need to do and that's truly one of the main reasons why I love the Nana J2 juicer. I think in order to save you guys some time we're going to go ahead and speed this part of the video up for you guys and uh, let the Nama J2 juice. Alright, 
as you guys can see, the J2 ripped through all those grapes, ginger, and jicama. I do want to give you guys a heads up there when you guys are juicing jicama in a slow juicer. The machine will make some funny, like, grinding, creaking noises. That's completely normal. It's just due to the texture, maybe the chalkiness of the jicama. So we're going to go ahead and turn the machine off, and now we're going to go ahead and load up the rest of the grapes and jicama into the J2. All right, we got all that loaded in the J2. Let's go ahead and put the lid back on and turn this on, and we're going to go ahead and let it juice on up. The J2 is pretty much all done. I'm going to show you guys this pulp here. So you guys can see literally the pulp. We got, you know, nice broken up pulp. You can see the grapes were just totally pressed out. And all we're seeing left is just some of the skin. It's been quite effective at juicing this recipe. Uh, the pulp is still a little bit wet. I'm not going to say it's completely dry. You could run it back through the juicer a second time. This works sometimes. or sometimes it does not work. Because sometimes it just, you know, flails around on the top of that actually going in. But anyways, this is our juice, and now I want to go ahead and taste test it for you. Fiber-rich juice with the Seibel and in Seibel fiber made in the Nama J2 juicer right there. Mmm. That's a good recipe. What do I taste? I taste a strong ginger kick, which is exactly what I wanted. Anti-inflammatory going on in my mouth right now. And it's, even though we juiced, you know, half jicama, this to me is still quite sweet. And this depends on where you are in your journey. Maybe if you haven't been, you know, juicing a lot of vegetables and things, this might not be too sweet for you. But this is plenty sweet. And I couldn't even imagine drinking a straight grape juice these days myself because it would just be too sweet over the top. You'd be like, whoa, this is too sweet. So I want to encourage you guys to retrain your taste buds so you're more sensitive to sugar so even when you juice you know half grapes and half jicama this thing is still totally sweet mm. and you got all that fiber in there too for a better mouth feel and more of that uh, fiber sibo and insibo fiber going in you that in the end i believe you'll be healthier because of it. So if you guys enjoyed this episode learning about my 10 tips on how to juice fruits the healthiest way possible, um, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Also be sure to share this video with somebody else that may be interested in juicing fruits so that they could learn from my 27 years experience of selling juicers, uh, using different juicers, and more importantly, juicing fruits and sharing my thoughts as a juicing expert on juicing fruits and the best ways to do it for your health. Also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you miss out my new and upcoming episodes after coming out every five to seven days. You never know where I show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel or what two juicers I'll be comparing. Make sure you click the bell so you get notified as my new videos come out. And finally be sure to check out past episodes. Our past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 600 episodes at this time teach you guys all about the different juicers as well as sharing my tips and tricks on juicing as well as storing your juices as well as many other topics. How to formulate your own juice recipes. I'll put a couple of these cool videos down below that I want you guys to watch to enhance your knowledge about juicing and the juicers. So with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.